and let's get into this because you know this Mike Babcock story by now. The you know the famous rate your teammate story, Mitch Marner. It's the Father's Day weekend trip, but I'm gonna pull you in, and you're not working hard enough without the puck. So you wait. You rate your teammates based on work ethic, best to worst. Mitch Marner does this, and Mike. Well, he that's refuses what, at first. That's what Mike Babcock told Mitch Marner. Yes, that's, the, that's he said. The I, I'm. I want because here's what I want you to know. I want you to do this because I want you to model yourself off the best guys. So you list for me on this team best to worst. Work ethic. And, and this is his rookie year, which is what year? 16, 17. Oh, and Mitch Marner refused it. We, you could probably find when the father's trip was. Mm-hmm. Um, it does, it kind doesn't matter. It contextualize it all, but yeah. Sure. Um, Marner put himself at the bottom of the list, and supposedly Babcock got heated. He's like, come on, tell me. And so he throws Nazem Kadri and Tyler Bozak at the bottom of the list. Tyler Bozak, his line mate. Yep. Yep. Tyler Bozak, his line mate. Nazem Kadri... Well, actually, I was about to say Nazem Kadri probably the longest tenured Leaf at that time. Actually, it was probably Bozak. And Mike promptly goes into the dressing room and tells those two guys about it. That's uh, that's wild. It's just wild. That is a, just a heads up, another thing. We talked about equal opportunity employment. We talked about doing your due diligence to find the right employee. Mm-hmm. That's a fireable offense at any office I've ever worked at. If that ever happened here, you'd be gone. You'd be gone. Or at very worst... Be reprimanded. Or, or sorry, at very least. Yeah, what the fuck is wrong with you? So here's the thing, too. Lou knew about it. Brennan Shanahan knew about it. The veterans on the team knew about it. Mm-hmm. And they dealt with it. And Shani this week apparently went out and said that there wasn't much value in rehashing the past, that it was a mistake, and that, you know, that the organization... I think if Shanahan was put in a in this position again, he would have probably handled it differently. From his perspective, I can understand why he says there's not much value in rehashing the past. But Brendan Shanahan needs to understand, and he can forgive us for right now reacting like this. Mm -hmm. We have just found this out. It's like dating somebody for five years and finding out that three months in, they cheated on you. Mm -hmm. You can't erase all the good things that happened in the intervening years. Sure. But it still hurts like hell to find out, doesn't it? Yeah. And you'd probably have some questions. I would think so. It might make you you trust. You shouldn't begrudge that person for asking a question. Yes. And the fact that this, and this is where I'm naive. I, 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 guys, on Sunday night, I legitimately stood behind, whoa, what the heck is Mike Commissar, or Commodore, excuse me, not Commissar, Mike Commodore. Like, okay, so he was a tough coach and he didn't like you. That's all I thought it was. Man, like, I'll, <coughs> I'll, I'll stand by the fact that it is perfectly fine to say tweeting a picture of someone that they don't know about is a little bit weird. It's a little I, weird. I think you shouldn't sell t-shirts uh, that say pack your bag, pack your shit, Babs, and make money off that. Although, I, as a revenge tactic, now knowing what we know, <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I don't really blame him for sure. it. Sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I wouldn't do it, but I don't blame him it's now. It's a little different in context when you're like, yes. oh, he gets to make money off a dude who psychologically abused him. And like, potentially cost him money. Sure. Oh, as yeah. well. Uh, sure. And like, in, in terms of Mark Fraser, that was my confusion. Is wh- he, So he steps up and he says those things. First of all, they were so thickly veiled that like I didn't know what to extract from them and also the trigger for it was commodore tweeting a picture of babcock mm-hmm. so that's where the confusion came from right and yeah, i right? And i just said mike mark fraser i even said this i said who are you i did i'm like you didn't play for him apparently he did play one preseason game for him okay yeah. but like i wouldn't call that as a like a full season or whatever but it was yeah. like you got a, you got a sniff what yeah but what do you mean with this right yeah. now understanding the stories that mark fraser obviously heard which we did not know at the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this makes sense. And here's the thing. Let's go back to Babcock for a second. I was, and again, call me naive for this, but I am. I was naive enough to think that a head coach of an NHL hockey team would do anything and everything to get that team to be better, win mm-hmm. more, and be more cohesive as a unit. I believe it. Yeah. That anything this childish, this Bush League, this cruel, could happen in an NHL dressing room, I could never have conceived of it. In fact, this tactic alone, in my entire life, I could have gone my entire life, if I lived 80 years, I'd be lucky to live 80 years, I would never have even thought that doing something like this would be possible. I would never have thought about, well, you know, I'm going to have someone write down a list of the top and the and the bottom, and then I'm going to share it with these guys and think this is a good thing. I would expect it to be in a Tina Fey movie. Yeah, I've always, I think I'm on the same line as you, is that I've always thought pro sports was so much simpler. 
that these guys are just kind of X's and O's guys and they're motivators, but they're always just trying to win. Right. Not so- psychologically damage people. And I can understand Mike Babcock saying, you weren't good enough, you need to be better, even if it was unfair. Even if, even if that person was good enough and objectively the numbers said they were good enough and Mike Babcock didn't see it that way. I could see that. I can't see this. And I thought, because of that, that Mike Babcock was a tough coach. But what we didn't know was Mike Babcock was vicious. Well, and, and, and we brought up his, what, what is it, a psych degree? Yeah. What, what fucking class did you learn that one in there, Mike? <laughs> well, and, what? And, and so this, that, that's the crazy part. You're right. Why is it? How on earth? Who? Who with any level of expertise? And there's there's such a difference between knowledge and application, and I don't think he has the the latter. But in any action like this, would you not agree? Has a certain degree of not only a there's a devious nature to it because yes. Mike this was premeditated. Mike knew, but and I looked this up. I was trying to find the right word to define it in my own head, and I said vicious earlier. And here's why I didn't say cruel, because cruel is defined as causing pain or suffering, which he did do. Hmm. But the word vicious is defined as deliberately cruel or violent. So this it's is, worse. So, so you got cruel, yeah. and then you got vicious. Vicious above. This was deliberate. Mm-hmm. This is exactly what we're looking for here. Forget that he was trying to motivate a player, whatever he says his intentions were, or what his goals were. He deliberately was cruel to someone who had no power in that situation. Mitch Marner's a rookie. And remember, in Mitch Marner's sophomore year, he played some time on the fourth line. Yeah. And the point of the exercise, by the way, as long as we're going to examine it, was to motivate Marner to be less lazy. Right. Marner acknowledges... He views himself as the laziest player on the team. And rather than starting a conversation there, he's got to bring the vets into it. And then make, and then apparently, by all accounts, Mark, or sorry, Mitch Marner cried because he was so <laughs> devastated. And this is the guy. I would probably cry too as a 19 year old. Yeah. What, do you, what do you always say about Mitch Marner? He chugs a Mountain Dew and goes out and scores a goal, <laughs> yeah. right? They brought him in on the road trip to try and motivate the guys because he's such a because little puppy dog. Because Babs had them under his thumb so bad. Because Babs had them so pissed off. Yeah, was uh-huh. he on the plane with Keith, just going, "Oh, this is amazing"? I don't know. Now don't here's know. The th- now apparently well, the vets. Sorry. Yeah. Well, I was, again, we're getting into stuff now that we cannot corroborate. Sure. But you yeah. see on Mitch's palm, he's got the smile. Oh. In the in the winky face, supposedly yeah. tattooed. No, no, he has it written on his glove. Oh, okay. Yeah, he does it, and I think Austin started doing it after him. Uh, supposedly, it's to remind him that hockey's supposed to be fun. Ah, huh. that's what beautiful. I read on. That's it amazing. Is, I is, love that. It amazing. also makes me want to die a little bit. <laughs> yeah. You know, what I, mean? I read that. I don't know if it's true. It was. I mean, it was definitely the right day to read that. I guess to invoke a certain emotion. But it, like, it's it's believable now. To be deliberately cruel to someone in who has no power in that situation, you are the one of the winningest coaches all time. Mm-hmm. You have two gold medals in a Stanley Cup. You mm-hmm. coached Nick Lindstrom. You coached Pavel Datsuk. You coached. Henrik Zetterberg, you coach Paul Korea. Austin Matthews. Well, yeah, but Austin Matthews was an Austin. No, no. James Reimer. Fuck yeah. Yeah, true, <laughs> Sorry, that too. <laughs> so Mitch is trying to be a star. Yes. And all he wants to do is be a star, and Mike Babcock takes advantage of him. It's a wonder that Mitch Marner is still as amped up to play hockey as he is. And suddenly the outrage about Jason Spezza finally fucking makes sense. Because when, when we were talking about that scratch story, I'm like, okay, Jason Spezza is supposed to be the fourth line center. I don't know <laughs> it's a big deal that he's scratched. Now I know that Jason Spezza was not scratched because Jason Spezza is on a rotation. Mm-hmm. Jason Spezza was scratched because Mike Babcock enjoyed being an asshole. Yeah. I Dude, def- that- did that move that day? I was like, <laughs> so did I. I, I like. I was like, I like having a coach who doesn't care about this stuff. He's just doing it because he's trying to win. But now it just seems he's doing it because he's trying to be cruel. Well, in yes. essence, in essence, I got it. It sh- it shouldn't matter which game. Right. Uh, the tie goes to the veteran that what, that we wanted him to drop, and then he does this, and I'm like, well, I guess he dropped it. So but, I guess that's okay. But now. We're a quarter of the way through the season, and bless Nick Shore and his skill set, mm-hmm. but I know which one I'd rather have. And in and in the the defense of the Tigers, a veteran, and he's trying to win, and all that stuff. You you forget the fact that 
at the end of the day, all these professional sports are just entertainment. Yes. And that a guy playing in front of his home crowd. It's a story. It means more than winning the game, probably, and because then, it's just, it's supposed to be for the fans. And, and it it's goes, supposed to be fun. 